You guys won't believe how huge these ants are. I traveled all the way to Singapore, which has been dubbed the ant capital of the world, in search of what all ant keepers know as the giant forest ant, aka Dinomermex gigas, as it's called in science. These ants blew my mind, and I'm certain they will blow your mind as well, as we explore how these ants live both in the wild, where I filmed them in their natural habitat, deep inside a Singapore forest, and how neat these gigantic ants are as pets. Speaking with an ant hobbyist, John Yi, of Just Ants Ant Pet Shop, you guys will be amazed by what we discover as we delve into the neat lives of these over inch long giant forest ants, here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Last week, I live streamed trekking through the forest in Singapore at night in search of the fabled giant forest ants. Feel free to check out that live stream after you watch this video as we saw all kinds of creatures. Sadly, the internet deep in the forest was quite limited, so it came out pixelated, and we disconnected a few times. However, the good news is, I was able to get some 4K footage of the ants when we found them. Have a look. When I spotted them along their trail they had established up and down a tree, I couldn't believe my eyes. These ants were hands down the hugest ants I'd ever seen in my life. They were massive larger even than any queen ant I'd ever seen. I just had to pick them up. I grabbed the ants and held them in my hands, and they were truly a sight to behold. I felt as though we had found the ant unicorn. They were gorgeous ants, and surprisingly quite docile and non-aggressive. Have a look. Can you believe how huge these ants are? In my mind, I drooled imagining owning a colony of these ants at home. Sadly, however, they aren't native to where I live, so I knew that wouldn't be possible. Still, it was so cool to be holding such gargantuan ants, like these Dinomermex gigas. The ants were actually quite active on their trail at this time of the night, as they came back and forth from something far away and deep in the tree where I couldn't get to. Their abdomens were quite full of fluid, which to me meant they were probably drinking something sweet somewhere beyond in the tree. I would later find out what. It was a bit hard to film them with my macro lens because they were so huge and fast moving, so I tried to place some of the ants in a little jar. They were stunning. I eventually also spotted a major, a specialized worker with a huge head, which was slightly larger than the ordinary workers. I couldn't get over how big they were. In my mind, I knew that if these were the sizes of the workers, then the queen must be totally massive. I would later find out. At one point, I was finally able to film a worker ant resting in place and get a proper look. Check it out, AC family. Isn't it just stunning? Now this worker measured just over an inch long. I loved the coloration of its abdomen, which was just full of sweet fluid it had collected from somewhere. These giant forest ants are among the largest ants in the world. They used to be classified under the genus Campanatus, which is the genus of carpenter ants, which is why they look similar, but were later grouped into their own genus, Dinomermex. In Singapore, and other areas of Southeast Asia where they are native, they are most active at night, when it's cooler. As common as they are in their native range, little is actually known about them by the locals who see them frequently on roadsides and forests like this. I personally had so many questions about them. What was their diet? When do the queens fly? How would one care for these huge ants in a captive setting? At one point, I caught an ant carrying a plant insect along their trail, which, in light of the ants' full gasters, to me meant that the ants were definitely drinking honeydew, a sweet fluid they milk from plant insects. All my questions were about to be answered. I visited the ant store of my new ant hobbyist friend, John Yi, of Just Ants, who runs an incredible ant store in Singapore. It truly blew my mind. He was kind enough to show me around his incredible store, give me a tour of his various ant setups, and answer a few of my questions. How did you get started? Wow, it started off uh, many years ago when I was actually given an ant colony by one of my relatives. Mm -hmm. And I was really mind blown by all of their behaviors and how they have shown me life lessons. Awesome, like? Wow, to never give up, no matter how 
tough the situation is, you know, to always be strong-willed and always push on. That's great. So it does seem like other than the curiosity aspect and education, we humans can learn a lot from ants. Yes, we humans can learn a lot of life lessons. We shouldn't be treating them like a pest. Take a step and understand them a little bit more. Awesome. So this store is called Just Ants here in Singapore. What year did you start? We started in late 2019. And how many colonies do you, would you say you have here? Wow, I have close to maybe 100 to 200 colonies. All for sale? Uh, some of them are for sale. Mm -hmm. and some are our, our personal collection. Now, are the species you keep here native or do you have any that are imported from other areas? So all our ant species are native to Singapore. Uh, we do not uh, keep uh, non-native species. And you mentioned to me that people from other countries message you to ship them queens, is that correct? countless emails and messages here and there. Just out of curiosity, which is the most requested for you to ship? Oh, that's an easy one. Uh, I believe it's the um, giant forest ants, Dino Mermex um, Gigas. Awesome. And you know what? That's a perfect segue because this episode is about Dino Mermex Gigas. We uh, recently saw them in the forest. Tell us about the care of Dino Mermex Gigas. First of all, when do you catch their queens? In Singapore, they fly probably more uh, early into the year, like in April, May. But uh, um, some of our ant keepers in Singapore have actually found them like in September or October. Wow, so they kind of have multiple uh, flight periods, yeah, I guess? Yeah, it's really hard to predict the actual um, flight patterns. So here and there, uh, there are sightings around Singapore. It's really lucky and fortunate if you encounter one. I see. There are some um, sources online that say Dino Myrmex gigas uh, is a queenless colony, that, they're, that they run on gamma gate system like some other ants. Is, so that's false. Uh, so Dino Myrmex, they have a queen. They do have a queen. Okay, and um, when you're raising them at the founding stage, tell us about the setup. So the founding stage has to be really kept simple based on my findings. Mm -hmm. um, a small container with a small cave for her to hide and some moss to keep the humidity in. Interesting, so sphagnum moss and a cave made of what? A cave made of it's rocks just, um, or? It could be like a, you know, those decorations for fishes, a small little cave. Oh, even like an artificial, an artificial one. plastic just to keep hide. The, um, yeah, a sense of security, keep the enclosure moist um, and do not disturb her as she's very sensitive to light and check back on her periodically like once a week and not to cause too much shaking or vibrations. Yeah, less stress. And um, how long does it take for them to found a colony? So it takes around two to three months. That is a long time. For the first batch of uh, nanetics to hatch. All right, John, so tell us more about this Dino Myrmex Giga setup here. So this colony over here, it's around one and a half years old. Uh -huh. And out of our many failed attempts, um, this was one of the successful ones. I see you've tried different setups. Yes, we have failed countless times, numerous times. And this one is the the most successful the in most your successful one. experience. Wow. So tell us about the setup. Are they nesting in... Is this moss? Yeah, this is actually moss. It's and it looks like there's peat moss as well, yeah, right? peat moss and we try to give them a lot of humidity in the nest. So I I've actually constructed a, a little box inside. Oh, there's a box inside. Yeah, with uh, a lot of holes that I've punched out, and it provides you know constant humidity. And I at see. At the same time, they feel really at ease because there's no light going in. I see. It's really dark. Really dark. We can't see them. Yeah, we... they're in there. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, I think I love that that design for setup because it's basically just a one chamber with holes for humidity and I guess a, an entrance hole, which is right there. Okay, just one entrance hole? Two, one at the top. Oh, I see. One at the bottom. So, so here's the one. That I was talking about. This is a simple cave. Uh, okay. And that is the other entrance hole. Now, what are you using as a barrier here? So we're actually using um, a special kind of talcum powder. Okay, it's not baby powder? Uh, we have stopped using baby powder. I see. So apparently this new talcum powder can last even 
longer than baby powder. Oh, interesting. It's a uh, special type of talcum. That's great. Tell us about their diet. Uh, they can be quite fussy at times, mm -hmm. um, but they love honey. They love um, honeydew apples. Apples? Yeah, they love apples. Wow. Occasionally, we'll treat them to some um, crickets, mealworms. Interesting. But usually they avoid and they only eat when they are hungry. And you said they're more active at night, right? Yes, they're more active at night. I see. Yeah, they're a nocturnal species, but they look pretty active. So are you saying in the night more come out? The more will come out. Please. How big is this colony, would you say? Oh, yeah, I would guess it's around 30 to 40 strong. 30 to 40 workers. That is incredible. So this colony is usually not in the shop. It's actually at uh, my home. Oh, I see. You keep them indoors? I keep them indoors. Do you use air conditioning or...? Um, just normal room temperature. Normal room temperature. I see. That is amazing. You know, it's really, really sad that we don't have these native to where I live. However, you know, maybe we might one day discover that they are native to where I live. What is some advice you have for new ant keepers who might want to enter the hobby, but they're just kind of intimidated to get started because they're afraid there's lots to learn? Well, our advice is usually to have patience. You really need a good sense of time um, to study this hobby and not you know, really go on in impulse. Really have that mindset that, you know, to be like the ants. You might fail during the first few tries. You might get upset if your queen passes on or if your colony fails to establish. Never, you know, give up the, the love for ants. You know, keep trying. Great, thank you so much. That's uh, some excellent advice. There you go. Keep on trying. Don't give up. And there you have it. I had learned so much about Dinomyrmix Gigas and their care as pets, thanks to John Yi. I knew they had a sweet tooth. Now, it was a bit of a mystery to me why they were found throughout Southeast Asia, except my country where I live. But perhaps scientists just haven't found them yet. On this channel, we've already made geographic discoveries of ants that were formerly not known to reside in my country, only to find out they existed in my yard. That ant species was Moranoplus bicolor, and it only showed me that the world needs more ant enthusiasts and myrmecologists. Ant keepers like John Yi was truly a trailblazer in my books, in both Singapore and the hobby of ant keeping. Before leaving, he let me write my name in one of the ant setups using sugar water. And we watched as the ants drank it all up. Check it out! that was that. If you guys are ever in Singapore, you guys must visit the Just Ant Store in Yishun and catch John and his team to chat more about ant keeping and these awesome giant forest ants. Now speaking of ant keeping and ant keeping equipment, I wanted to quickly announce that now is the perfect time to get into the ant keeping hobby as we are having an incredible holiday sale at AntsCanada.com where we are offering 10% off on all ant farms and outworlds at the shop. Plus, you guys can get a free ant keeping handbook when you use the coupon code ANTSCANADA. Just add it to your cart when you order and punch in the code to get it for free. Our ant keeping products make a great gift idea for all your ant and nature loving friends and family. I'd love for all of you guys to keep ants with us. If you need ant colonies, we even have a section on the website where you can source locally caught and raised ant colonies with a queen for your ant farms. Just a note that you must order before December 10th if outside the US or December 17th if within the US if you hope to receive your package before Christmas. And duty charges may apply for non-US residents. Thank you all for watching today's episode on Giant Forest Ants aka Dinomyrmix gigas. We'll be going back to the ant room next week. It's ant love forever.